Dear students, in this module, we will be focusing on Becker's theories on population with a special focus on his contributions in the theory of uh, fertility. The major learning objective of uh, this module is to focus on Becker's theory and also how the child from both from quantity and quality angle the relation that exists with respect to fertility behavior, the way in which Becker has explained has been presented in this module. Carey Stanley Becker, December 2, 1930 to May 3, 2014, is an American economist and is a professor of economics and sociology at the University of Chicago. Gary Becker made brilliant and insightful contributions to economic science by addressing a wide range of economic and social questions. In doing so, he broadened the scope and method of economics. Becker created a powerful body of economic science. He did so by relentlessly applying three principles. Economic agents act in their self-interest, that is broadly defined and ever more broadly defined over his career. B. Preferences are stable, but they can evolve through practice, habituation, learning and hence they can differ among people and see markets which are broadly defined they are in equilibrium that is both formal markets and informal non-market settings using explicit and implicit shadow prices respectively as quoted in Becker 1978. Becker's research on the economics of fertility exemplifies his evolution in thinking as guided by data, his willingness to acknowledge initial empirical failures and to creatively respond to them. It also illustrates his ability to focus on problems over long stretches of time. This research eventually branched out to the corpus of his work on household production, marriage and the economics of the family as quoted in Becker 1991. Gary Becker's work has pioneered the economic approach to the study of fertility behavior. His research has been instrumental in developing the economics of fertility from a specialty topic to an integrated part of labor economics, the economics of education and human capital and the theory of economic growth. Described as a Becker's fertility theory is mostly taken from the well organized work on Gary Becker especially focusing on the quality and quantity of children as brought out by Matthias Dobke. Let us focus on Becker's population theory or usually called as a fertility theory. Before Gary Becker's population theory, fertility decisions have been chosen widely which are considered to be the outside the realm of economic analysis. One of the reasons to consider that the fertility is not influenced by economic factors is that the data on fertility have not indicated an economic mechanism. In developed countries especially, the fertility has steadily declined over time even though family incomes are rising. In addition, the relationship between family income and fertility has been it is shown to be a negative or sometimes uh, very weak. These observations have suggested that the desire to have many children has declined over time and that high income families place less value on childbearing than those among the poor. Gary Becker in his seminal paper on the theory of fertility choice in 1960 has considered children as consumer durables like cars or houses. Thus, his paper has departed from earlier writings on fertility by demographers and sociologists in two different and equally important ways. First, his analysis assumes that preferences are given. The assumption of given preferences is what puts the economics into Becker's analysis. By ruling out shifts in taste or preferences, Becker's theory of fertility choice places the spotlight on changes in income and relative prices for explaining trends in fertility. The second departure from earlier studies on fertility is the focus on the concept of quantity versus quality trade-off in fertility choice. Becker has observed that the quality of children to account for the negative relationships between income and fertility. However, the lack of a strong income effect on fertility without a quality dimension appears puzzling. 
Of course, in principle, it is possible that children happen to be an inferior good. Assuming that children are inferior, which is uh, unattractive for two reasons. First, inferior goods are usually inferior because there exist close substitutes that are superior. For instance, bus rides tend to be inferior because people buy cars and drive rather than ride the bus as they get richer. In the case of children, it is difficult to think of any close substitute. Second, Wecker thinks that the income fertility relationship switches to positive at a very high income levels, such as major industrialists like Birlas and the Tatas of uh, the other so many industrialists in country. In his paper of 1960, Becker conjectured that parents derive utility from both the number of children, that is children from quantitative terms, and the children's education and well-being, that is children from qualitative angle. Child quality is a proxy by the amount spent on each child at given prices. As examples of child quality choices, Becker mentions whether the parents provide separate bedrooms, send them to nursery schools and private colleges, give them dance and music lessons and so forth. The quality dimension does not immediately affect the income elasticity of uh, demand for children. The income elasticity of demand for children depends on whether child quality or quantity responds more strongly to income changes. Becker's argument for a low income elasticity of child quantity and a high income elasticity of child quality rests on an analogy with other consumer durables such as cars or houses. When households become rich, they do not immediately buy larger numbers of cars or houses. Instead, they would go for higher quality of car or a house. Similarly, Becker concludes that the income elasticity for child quality, that is spending per child should be high, whereas the elasticity of quantity, that is number of children should be low. Income elasticity of demand refers to the sensitivity of the quantity demanded for a certain good to a change in real income of consumers who buy this good, keeping all other things constant. Depending on the values of the income elasticity of demand, goods can be broadly categorized as inferior goods and normal goods. Normal goods have a positive income elasticity of demand. That is, as income rises, more goods are demanded at each price level. Normal goods whose income elasticity of demand is between 0 and 1 are typically referred to as necessity goods, which are products and services that consumers will buy regardless of changes in their income. Examples of necessity goods and services include tobacco products, haircuts, water and electricity. As income rises, the proportion of total consumer expenditures on necessity goods typically declines. Inferior goods have a negative income elasticity of demand. As consumers income rises, they buy less of inferior goods. A typical example of such type of product is a margarine which is much cheaper than butter. In addition to household income and the cost of children, Becker also considers knowledge of birth control methods for fertility regulation to trade off between quantity and quality of children. Before the availability of modern methods of family planning, couples have been limiting the number of births by using various measures like delaying age of marriage, reducing the coital frequency during marriage or abstaining from sex altogether. Becker in his paper of 1960 advocated that not all couples are equally aware of controlling fertility and the knowledge of birth control methods has increased with family income. He said that fertility decreases with income with increases in family income up to a certain level and then on 
fertility increased with increase in family income at higher levels. He further said that the relationship between income and desired fertility is generally positive although weak, but the relationship between income and realized fertility that is actual fertility has initially declined because lower income households are less successful at controlling fertility. Let us discuss in detail about the quantity and quality trade of preferring child. Beckers has tried to focus on the child quantity quality trade off in the paper in 1973 written by him and Lees. While doing so, they have not mentioned that the knowledge of birth control is an explanatory factor. The main argument in Beckers and Lewis is that child in terms of quantity and quality are still closely connected through the household's budget constraints. Child quality is modeled as good spending on each child. This means that if child quality increases, that is more spending per child, increasing quantity or more children becomes more expensive. Conversely, if quantity increases, that is the number of children, increasing quality becomes more costly because the spending on quality accrues for each child. While these trade-offs are mentioned in the paper of 1960, the trade-offs are not formally with analysis. Therefore, it is not focused on this particular issue. An important implication of the trade-off between child quantity and quality through the budget constraints is that the income elasticity of fertility can be negative even if viewed in isolation. Both the quantity and quality of children are normal goods. That means the income elasticity of demand for quantity of children is negative and the income elasticity of demand for quality of children is also negative. If child quality is normal, a rise in income will increase quantity. The rise in child quality in turn increases the shadow price that is not based on actual market, market price of child quantity. The net effect on child quantity is therefore a combination of the direct income effect and a negative substitution effect. Thus, the theory can generate a negative income fertility relationship without having to rely on variations in knowledge of birth control. The Becker Lewis model of child quality has further been expanded to beyond parents' investments in child by building on ideas of Becker's theory of social interactions as cited in Becker 1974 and Becker and Thomas 1976. Becker Lewis model has extended by allowing child quality to depend not just on parental inputs but also on endowments which can take form of inherited ability, public investments in children and other such factors. Becker and Thomas showed that this feature can generate a U-shaped relationship between income and fertility, even if the income elasticities with respect to child quantity and total child quality, that is the sum of endowment and parental investment are equal and constant. That means fertility tend to be high at low levels of family income, followed by fertility decreases with increasing family income and fertility increases with increase in the income of the family. Becker and Tomes also discussed the predictions of the theory that is if child endowments depend on parental income and they consider the impact of economic growth on fertility. While this is done with a static model, the analysis anticipates later work on the quantity quality trade off in context of explicitly dynamic intergenerational models of fertility choice. Let us focus on the relationship between fertility levels and economic development. After 25 years of Becker's fertility theory, economic analysis of fertility results has a limited impact on other areas of economics. The joint work of Becker Robert Barrow has linked the economic theory of fertility to the theory of economic growth. Becker and Barrow 1988 have analyzed fertility within an explicit intergenerational model in which parents derive utility from the number of their children and the children's utility. Thus, 
child quality is no longer related to spending on children but consists of the children's well-being itself. Moreover, the children are themselves altruistic towards their own children, which induces parents a form of dynastic utility that depends on the children's utility, the grandchildren's utility and so on. The theory says that fertility should be positively related to these interest rates. Intuitively, the substitution effect that is generated by a higher interest rate induces the dynasty to increase the consumption of later generations that is children, grandchildren, etc. relative to that of the parents. This shift in the consumption path of the dynasty increases the utility that parents derive from the well-being of their children and hence increases desired fertility. The economic models of fertility is linked with the human capital that is the engine of growth. People's productivity has two major components, innate ability such as raw physical strength and acquired human capital. Even though the technology for accumulating acquired human capital is linear, the presence of innate ability implies that the rate of return to investing in acquired human capital increases in the stock of human capital. Intuitively, at low levels of human capital, Acquired human capital accounts for a small fraction of earnings so that a given percentage increase in acquired human capital increases earnings by a small amount. It is therefore observed that the economy exhibits two steady states, one in which income per capita stagnates and fertility is high and one in which there is sustained growth in income per capita and fertility is low. Thus, the model provides a joint explanation for the demographic and economic differences between pre-industrial Malthusian economies and growing industrial economies with low population growth. Let us focus the quantity quality model after 50 years. The quantity quality model of fertility which has been the dominant theoretical framework of fertility analysis, the economists have made explanation for over past 50 years. A number of studies have raised doubts on the empirical relevance of the child quantity quality trade-off, especially in industrialized countries. Studies by using data from Norway and Israel have found little or no impact of family size, that is number of children on education. On the other hand, studies using data from developing countries have found empirical evidence in support of child quantity quality trade-off. There are major criticism in Becker's theory of fertility. For instance, Becker has assumed that the poorer households do not have knowledge of birth control. Such an assumption is uh, not derived from the economic incentives alone. The second criticism is Becker's 1960 paper has not established that the fertility choices in economic terms and third, Becker's work has resulted in opening new insights by forcing social scientists to rethink their assumptions and analysis in finding people's behavior towards fertility and also on the microeconomics, especially on issues related to family income. James Dusenberry, 1960, who faulted Becker for not recognizing how the consumption of any child is closely tied to the consumption of other children in the family and to the parents' level of consumption is noteworthy. Children are no ordinary goods. Within a household, what is done for one is usually done for all. With rising income, the demand for higher standards of living and higher levels of child quality increases. So, in that sense, the criticisms that have been laid down are very valid. However, we have to think of the major contribution of uh, the attempt by Baker through his theory of how the economic dimension of uh, understanding the fertility behavior is a major contribution of uh, this theory.